Lake. If you guys can't tell, it's Memorial Day weekend. Not even. It's the week before. People are out here practicing for the weekend. We got the tubers. We got the speedboat. We got the little jet ski adoers. Yeah, kind of a party idea already. Yeah, there's a cruise along the lake here. You gotta kind of watch out for everybody. People are a bit mingled orcs. So just be ready for that. But yeah, I'm gonna head across over to my favorite little uh, skibbity doo point. You know, the point that I like to cross on through because it's just way too cool. And uh, yeah, I wanna have a chat with you guys about uh, where we're going as a venture brad. Ah, there you go, just like mama's spit. It always helps things out. So yeah, I'm just out here shadling, having fun, and uh, yeah, some of you guys may know, some may not, but uh, um, paramotors for sale. It's kind of strange, ain't it? What, 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 what do you think about that? They're, you know, oh, we got a passenger, it looks like it's still. But yeah, not having a, a paramotor is going to change things for Brad. You know, I can't get all my jolly just on this sailboat, even though sailing's a bunch of fun. So what, what do you think, guys, you guys have any guesses? Do you want to comment now and not change your guess before we get to the end of the episode, Tom? Ooh, it's getting a little pretty. Ooh, yeah, I think a little speed. I got my tractor going, I believe, so we should have some idea of what uh, speeds we get out of this one. Yeah, I kind of like this out here. A little pick up speed, getting a little squish splash as you go. I oh, turned too much down. Oh, it's all mixed waves and choppy. So yeah, it makes it fun. You're like playing dodge the boat and uh, <laughs> just generally dodge them all. So hopefully nobody tries to squeeze between shore and us. I'm gonna run out here, kind of this downwind. I wanna go around this island here, but the wind's coming like here. So I gotta go like this a couple of times to get around the wind because I don't wanna run straight down. It's just too gusty. All right. Keep this bad boy in. Turn, keep that turn going. There we go, get back across here. Dump the jib sail. Run it across. Using my third appendage to run the tiller for me. And we're getting a little too far across the wind. There we go. Ugh. Sheet out a little, grab some air. And try to get this thing back moving. Oh, we got to, uh, oh, that could have been dangerous. Crack myself in the head. All right, get all my lines. I guess they're sheets. Never call them ropes on a sailboat. Get these things sorted out. Now I'm trying to run downwind so I'm gonna have to do this a couple of times depending on the wind to get around here so yeah um, along with the paramotor I've been kind of weeding through some stuff I, I just get so freaking tired of uh, on the travel around some pull the sheet in see if she'll go downwind a little better like that I guess I need to move forward if I want to downwind as long as I'm not stuffing the bow in. So yeah, I got a bunch of randomness up for sale. Um, as this kind of all pays out, the legendary unurban suburban will probably be up for sale. Um, if you're curious on that or want to start saving your pennies or you want that thing, you let me know. Uh, we can work something out. And then I got a, I just, I kind of wonder, I'm 24 feet off the water line of this giant, you know, I forget how many square feet it is off the top of my head, sail. But I got this guy who puts me straight off his bow. Like, I always kind of wonder about that, especially when I, my speed is like 0.2. So yeah, when you guys see somebody like me, one, you're supposed to give right away to me. I, you know, sail power trumps motor power. You could just make a little turn, I can't. Uh, two, I'd really appreciate it if you went behind me 
because when you got one of those big super duper boats especially one of those wake boats that have the ballast tanks in them when i hit your wake oh man i about come to a stop and sometimes that really screws me up when i'm trying to cross a channel full of other people like this wake right here look at this i just slow right down and it helps if i turn into it so it cuts but sometimes that doesn't do me the best for the wind so yeah it's just always a consistent pain i'm gonna go ahead and jibe now which is a downwind turn which can be dangerous travel around oh, shit. <laughs> sheet out control the thing control the thing we almost freaking lost it right there getting a little gusty let's get the jib on the right side there we go get turned back across get on the reach that'll run us across downwind oh yeah the wind's picked up some. so i got this boat here let's see what he's doing called a beam reach we're almost like perpendicular to the wind it's running this way I'm trying to run past this island into this here and then we're going to tack back up to my favorite little spot that's just way too much fun so yeah if you're interested in suburban it's for sale um but i've just uh i've overlanded my whole life i've always been on the road but when i was young sir especially when my dad was around i um I spent a lot of time on the sea. I really enjoyed it. From my uh, early years in life, and I wasn't even legally allowed to drink yet. I got some strange idea in my head. I wanted to um, go live on Maui. We were there for vacation. I kind of filled out some apps. I got all on the answer machine was full. And I went and worked on this little dive tour boat thing that ran between the islands. And uh, I was pretty much uh, underwater tour guide. It was really a bunch of fun. I enjoyed the heck out of that. It was, it's fun. Uh, sometimes you gotta overcome people's oh fearness of the water, but you know, it, that's not a big deal. Uh, oh, yeah, the wind's shifting. Um, we're gonna go ahead and sheet in, or sheet out a little, pull this thing in, steer across the wind. There she is. Steer through the wind, jib out. Ah, get that bad boy back in and let's get it up on back through this little cove, shall we? So when I originally moved to Maui, I was uh, a little sketched out about that. I didn't realize it till I got there. And then like the first night I was like, wow, I'm thousands of miles from my friends thousands of miles from mom uh, everything just kind of changed i was like whoa i gotta kind of this is gonna be an interesting tap because the wind's kind of shifting right through here right where we want to go so i think we're gonna see some challenges to my skills here so we're gonna run it up into these reeds a little bit more till it looks too shallow it's too choppy and whatnot to get to stand up to really see so we're just gonna have to run it see what happens um all right, looks a little dark. Man, because if I run aground, I'm going to hit those backwards, going to pivot around, and it won't be good into the wind. But it's only one way to do this stuff, right? All right. Through the wind. And I kind of like to pull the jib in so it would, you know, I'm not fighting it all the time. But then at the same time, the boat handles better with it out. Like using the jib, it's called balancing the boat, and it doesn't want to steer into the wind as much. Uh, but yeah, so uh, it really kind of blew me away that I was very lucky that people that I grew, moved in with is called an Ohana, their little family house. They were super awesome people, very helpful, like insisting I take their truck and go shopping and, 
and I'll do whatever I need to do until uh, <laughs> I end up shipping my Jeep out there. Um, I'll put a link down in the description, but there's actually some videos of me running around uh, like a full idiot in the Jeep. And there's also some videos of me crawling around in mines, literally hand dug mines, uh, like three to 600 feet under Maui, um, where they used to pull all the water out and stuff for all the fresh water. It, kind of crazy how those came about but i actually got lucky being a venture brad and we got to go check those out so i'm gonna kind of watch it here get up where we can tack and besides general jeep shenanigans and good fun and uh yeah i turned 21 there on maui which was kind of neat had some good fun and uh tacking very not kosher and joseph wind rider i'm sorry i keep throwing my uh tiller in the water but uh, i'm just not as clean as you yet so yeah i uh learned a lot i learned that the things that i was worried about um when i moved to maui weren't really the issues the issues that i did have were taken care of and the other thing was I wasn't the first person to go play in Maui, you know, to do that. There was a lot of other people uh, that did it, so they kind of figured it out. And then the ones ahead of me kind of knew right what I needed, and they were helping me out. So it was, it was really such an awesome situation. Like I said, I enjoyed the heck out of that. Um, but then when I moved back from Maui, my scuba diving and all that kind of ended. I went back to being a landlubber. I really enjoyed the four-wheeling. I four-wheeled all over the Doogie Ursham and pretty much all the big name trails besides Alaska and General Schooling Off, and a bunch of trails that if you're lucky to know me, you've been on, and then the others, I'm sorry, but I keep stuff private. Uh, but yeah, I got all kinds of videos on my channels, four wheeling, especially with my old Jeep. All right, into the shallows, tacking. I didn't even realize my uh, leeward line from my jib was stuck. Whoa, we called that a little bit tight. Oh, yeah, because I could... <laughs> <laughs> I could see like the rudder kicking up muck as we went across the bottom there. That was a little interesting. Uh, traveler over. There we go. So yeah, like I said, I can't just sail straight up through here. Even though I make a little decent speed, even if the wind's right through this, um, I'm not. I, yeah, I'm not. I can't just sail into it. I can't sail straight into the wind. I gotta sail off to the sides of it. So that's what we're doing. I'm glad you're along for the ride because this is kind of neat. So yeah, Jeep's up for sale, paramotor's up for sale. I'm mumbling about getting tired of being a land lover. <sighs> I guess it's time for a, a proper sailboat, right? Not not to say it's not proper and a boatload of fun. Um, and it's teaching me a heck of a lot about just Especially catamarans don't tack very well, they don't turn. It's teaching me a lot about proper technique and that sort of thing, so I'm really enjoying that. I don't want to go too much further forward here because of the wind, or that I don't want to get stuck in on those reeds, but I want to take the minimum amount of tacks as possible. All right, tagging, calling out to the crew that's not there, maybe just the ducks that are listening. All right, back across. And I'm really bad about not having my hand on the sheet there. Alright, get back across, jib on the far side, make sure the leeward line's clear, and when I talk windward and leeward, windward, this is uh, what we call a port tack, port's the left side, starboard's the right side of the boat, and the air's coming over the left side, we call it a port tack, and uh, wow, that was shallow right there in a hurry, I'm glad I'm not feeling the ground, I'm going to get a little further forward, try to keep the rudders out, um, it's amazing how just moving your butt a foot makes all the difference. I'm going to sheet out because we're picking up speed there and I don't want to into this corner. Uh, and then windward is obviously, whoa, we call that a little beat. Oh. This thing to come across. Uh. And now this is the windward side. And in the side the wind's coming from and the leeward side is the uh, port side. So we're over here. Starboard tack. And we're probably going to have to because again, the wind's coming here, these telltales on the front, I can sail from about a 45 over, 
and I'm kind of like sliding sideways right now because um, I don't want to keep tacking back and forth. It's going to be a bunch of tacks. It gets complicated. If I lose my momentum like I'm kind of doing right there, I get in trouble. So I'm going to turn downwind, shoot in, let it speed up for a second, turn hard. Oh man, and I might have screwed up. Come on, baby. Come around. Okay, I got to reverse the rudders. All right, there she goes. Whoa. That would have been sketchy if I would have stalled there because it would have been way too easy to get in those reeds. All right. Jib back across. Still over the arm. And I got this bad habit of losing my uh, main sheet. I need to keep this in my hand because if I pull this down, it slows me down instantly besides steering into the wind. Gain a little speed. Turn, 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 turn. Right there. Such good practice doing this. And it helps us sheet out for a second. Let the air catch the thing. And then as it catches it, I can sheet in, pick my speed back up, get my jib around the far side. And I wasn't even counting. I'm sure you guys might be at this point, but we've already done a few tacks. But I think we might be on our last one here. Ready, set, tacking. There she goes. I love it in her. Here are those battens popping. It means I didn't stall in my turn. All right. <laughs> Such a cool feeling just like this straight here pushing through here. It's just, I enjoy the heck out of it. But I don't think we got enough in us to get around here. So we're going to do one more tack. All right, here we go. Tacking into the wind. across, shoot out, let it grab a little bit of air, the jib go over, all right, rocking and rolling, rocking and rolling, see our last tack was right off over there, right about there, and so we're just been zigzagging back and forth through here, now we're gonna come across, we'll run up into this corner one more time, Pack and then shoot back across the lake, back to kind of where we came from. Yeehaw. So yeah, proper sailboat, eh? <laughs> Canadian, eh? No, um, <coughs> and <coughs> besides just getting a sailboat, I want to get a liveaboard. Not just a liveaboard, like I'm going to park it in a marina and sit there and be a bench of Brad. <laughs> The stump on the log. No, we gonna go get ourselves <clears throat> what they call a blue water boat, meaning it's set up to go play in the ocean. But Bradley wants an ice cube boat because, you know, a whole globe of warming stuff or kind of want to go see for myself too at the part of the trip what's really going on and go put, you know, boots on the ground and see what's up in this world. Ooh, we got our main sheet dragging. I'll lose a little speed there. Let me clean off lines here. Oh, uh, we gotta really watch boats. Sheets across here. Get into this stuff, cross this choppage. Choppage, choppage. And yeah, get myself a proper blue water boat. Rig it, learn to sail it pretty good. And uh, yeah, like I said, I, you know, I moved to Maui, did that, I've done a few things. I kind of have a landmark in my life. I built this race car. Well, somebody else started it, and they did, they kind of cut on the body. It was an S10 truck. Again, there's videos in my uh, description. Uh, they kind of cut on it, kneaded around with it. <coughs> and then everyone lost interest. There was, uh, to build the motor compartment, it was really hard. And I was already kind of learning to do alundum work. So uh, I was given a chance to build the truck if I finished it. I did, and that was a, a real big thing to me. It was kind of more about... I did really, it was a hill climb truck. I did pretty well with the hill climb, went, won my class and that sort of thing. But uh, I didn't, you know, once the truck was built, it was kind of uh, wind shifty on me. We're gonna have to, or it's actually kind of dying and just sit here and play for a second. So that was just a challenge in itself for me to learn to, to build that thing to get over that hump. 
and there's some wind back. And then the next big uh, challenge in my life was when I uh, decided I wanted to move to Alaska, prodding from my uncle. Uh, went up there on vacation, liked it, decided, you know, I might as well give it a give it a go up here. Really glad I did. But the trip up, I've mul made multiple trips. Like, okay, the trip up at first was like holiness. I thought I was going off the end of the world for some reason. I wasn't. It was just Canada. They use different change and they got really good coffee and these Timmy Horton things all over the place. But it's it's the U.S. Besides. They actually are pretty polite on the whole. Uh, not to say Americans aren't polite, but uh, they're just generally, they're, you know, Canadians are nice people. Most people are nice people. That's one thing I've learned through the world. Uh, yeah, you guys are like, he's rambling, get to the point. No, I'm sailing, and you're along for the ride. And we're just stalling in the wind. I maybe need to turn a little more this way. Very hard to tell right now. Let me or my traveler out some. Let's see if I can't catch some air. There, there's maybe something. Um, so yeah, after a few trips up and down the Alcan. All right. I learned that uh, it's not the end of this world thing. I can do it. It's pretty simple. Um, just do it. Again, with my Maui trip, I learned that the things that I worried about, you know, weren't the, not to say don't go without a spare tire and all that stuff, but you don't need, you know, if you're towing a trailer, it's different, but if you have good tires on your, and you know, tires are the biggest thing in any vehicle. It's where the rubber meets the road. It's a safety device. Many reasons you want, and that's kind of a, a family thing too. Uh, lost my great grandmother because of not good tires. Um, but yeah, you just, you want to keep good tires on. They, they make all the difference. And you only need one spare to run to the Alcan. Uh, if you're doing it in the winter, it's kind of a different story. Again, I actually have a video on how to go across the Alcan in the winter time. Um, in an old truck. Well, most people consider ancient. To me, it's just a good old pickup truck. And this kind of sucks right now because I got these, like, foot, foot and a half waves. They're just, woohoo! Yeah! Splishy, splashy. And it... I had to turn like straight into them because I didn't want to take them sideways. <clears throat> and we lost all our air. Well, there's some wind back. So yeah, um, you know, you want to be prepared first aid kit. Uh, even in the summertime, you want to be able to stay, you know, you break down on the side of the road or something. You want to have food, you want to have blankets, you want to be self-sufficient. But the biggest thing with a lot of that is I've learned uh, taking orange with you. Well, not actually, that's kind of sketchy going through. Canada and actually the U.S. forward border of oranges. But uh, the trick to taking an orange with you or a camera phone, you know, get Instagram happy, is uh, you want to have a... <coughs> um, you want to just not... When things go wrong or iffy, you don't want to just go get it all excited. You know, just let things... Let things go. <coughs> get out, walk around. Um, one thing when people get their sound, just talking in general here, but I see it a lot. People get sucked, they instantly get excited. They forget why they're out there is to enjoy stuff. I've found some of the coolest stuff, literally like while I'm stuck somewhere or whatever else. So I just go screwing around and find some neat stuff. Um, you know, where there's a road or a trail means somebody put it there for a reason. So why don't you go figure out what that reason was? And, uh, yeah, so, <coughs> sorry, I'm just trying to sail, which I'm not the best at. Trying to watch boats, which they're not the best at boating. Most of them, some of them are really good, but on a whole, most boaters are kind of dingle dorks because they only do it a few hours a year. Um, but yeah, you just learn to roll the punches, learn to not get excited, take that orange out, peel it, um, enjoy it, you know, a little shot of sugar and uh, you know fiber and you know happy juice to your body will will make you feel better and stare at the stuff it'd be kind of amazing what you're stuck on and then see where you're gonna go after you get unstuck you know have a spot to turn around is the trail gonna get worse yada 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 so anyways i'm digressing here and there's ducks right off my bow they're like what is this guy doing he's quiet but he's big i'm not sure what he is 
done and done it. Oh, guys, I didn't really make you just wanted you to kind of swim off. Um, so, you know, all these progressive trips, I flew the Alcan one time, I was lucky enough to do that in a 206. Got to build some time when I first started flying, coming down the Alcan, way cool. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, thank you, Brett, too, for hooking all that up. And um, yeah, so I, I figured, it's always been in my head, I contemplated doing it the motor motorcycle years ago. Giddy up, cowboy. Let's get this sheet out, see if we catch some air. Uh, did it with the motorcycle years ago, or wanted to do it the motorcycle years ago, and then just the logistics and the cost of fuel and transporting the bike between stretches that you're not gonna be able to ride or do safely, uh, meaning hostile natives. Uh, I I don't know why I didn't think it sooner, but there again, my old biking friends have been harassing me, and now the idea's in my head. I guess we're gonna do it. We're gonna do the big lap around this big rock we call the sun, or <laughs> we're on the rock going around the sun. Uh, Carl Sagan who appealed to it is our pale blue dot, which I really like. Uh, because of all the atmosphere and haze, it certainly appears to be hail, pale. Let this guy pass, gives me some waves. So I figure, why not? I'll just uh, go. Take a trip on the big lap. I'm going all the way around the planet. Well, the, the thing about that is we're not gonna just like go around the equator because obviously we can't. Um, it, yes, it is round. We're not even debating that. Um, I, what, I'm not even gonna get into that subject. It hurts my head just thinking that people will even think that way. Uh, but yeah, depending on route and what sort of boat I get, uh, make a difference i might do kind of like the traditional stuff and go down depending on the time of year i get started here what sort of boat i end up with uh, i might do something fairly traditional uh cruise around the road world I'm guessing it'll probably take two years people do it in a lot less time than that but it seems to be like when it comes to avoiding cyclone seasons and actually enjoying the trip, stopping off the islands, playing, relaxing, taking it all in. Uh, the, the trick really seems to be doing it in about, a, you know, estimated two, two to three years. Like, you don't want to cap yourself. But depending on, man, this wind hasn't decided what it's, it's like off my bow now. So let's just turn here. It's definitely pulling my bow around. So yeah, it, it, that's kind of a change. So yeah, um, if I could get a, a fairly decent rugged boat beyond just a standard blue water boat, something with a heavy steel lundum hull or super duper thick fiberglass, that Northwest Passage is pretty appealing. Um, I definitely would want a boat that's got bottoms that go like this and not one of those bulgy sailboats because if the uh, ice comes in around me, I want to be able to pop up and fall over on the side and not just get stuck on it. It's kind of crazy thinking about, just mind boggling. Uh, <laughs> you'd even be in that situation. Uh, but it's happened before, uh, and it's just something to be realistic about when doing things. Man, what is this wind doing? I kind of wish I knew. But yeah, you gotta be realistic about what what the realities of everything are of the world is and what could potentially happen. Uh, but yeah, I would really like to do the the Northwest Passage. That would be a, a fall game I think I would enjoy. But you don't really know unless you go. So that's kind of the point of the video. I wanted to give you guys some motivation. Um, asked me 20 years ago when I moved to Maui if I would have thought about going around the world. Nope. Ask me um, uh, 10 years ago, no. Five years ago, no. A month ago, probably not. 
vent before I even got this thing. But you know what? Uh, why not? And uh, that's why I'm kind of putting it out here. I've been writing it down every day. It's what you feed your mind. It's what you tell yourself. Um, planning. Kind of got to liquidate. You know, I really enjoy flying the paramotor. Some of the friends I've made on the road. Part of me really wants to continue doing that life. But at the same time, um, it's a big horizon out there. There's a big world. I would enjoy seeing it. Seeing what, uh, seeing what there is to offer. All right. And if you guys don't know, little black and white striped ones right there. That means between there and shore, it ain't something you're going to want to drive through. You'll run your prop up on that for shizzle. And my rudders were down as far as most props are, if not further. So yeah, skirt, skirt, skirt right across here. Looks like we might be able to pull this off and do a little swing into the wind. Let's go ahead and pull the jib in. That's the way I do it. That is I uncleat it. Use the auto tiller there, the old foot. Jib in. Lock it off. What I'm gonna do here is sail it and try to turn it right at the last moment through the pick up my buoy here, turn it through it at the last second so that way I can pick it up under the boat and then come back here. And I think I need to kill my main at the same time right as I turn. All right, see how we do this, right? Clip it off to the dolphin catcher here for a second to get our mainsail down. All right, well, like thank you guys for coming along board the Bradham Express here. Glad to, glad to have you. It's always fun to share these experiences with others. Let me get back here, pop the rudders up. Check this out, and we are at the world famous Body Beach where everybody gets down with the jet skis. I don't know if this guy's gonna get down and do any flippage for us. Doesn't look like it. He might, I don't know. You see guys bust random ass flips out of nowhere. But yeah, pretty cool. For a Thursday, the lake's already pretty busy. But uh, I'm enjoying myself. Again, I wanted you guys to thank for tagging along, enjoying these videos. It's always fun to. Get the comments down there and uh, see what you guys think. I uh, always like your opinion on what parts of this you like, what parts you don't. But anyways, I'm gonna saddle up. I got some fajitas home I wanna cook up. So I'm gonna go home and do that. And I'm gonna get out of here. So see ya. Luckily, it's got a nice weather helm. Uh, I mean, it turns into the wind and kind of just slows down when I do that stuff. Uh.